All right, kids, it's time for our Bible study again this week. We are going to continue to study God's promises. We're going to continue to use the study guide, God Always Keeps His Promises, Unshakable Hope for Kids, illustrated by Alicia Trunfio, written by Max Licato, and adapted by Tama Fortner. This is our study guide as we study God's Word. And what are we studying right now? We're studying God's promises. God makes promises to each and every one of us. And you know what's even cooler than that? He keeps those promises. When he tells you he's going to do something, he does it. So let's see what the promise is this week, and let's find out how he keeps it. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, the promise we're going to study this week is the promise that says, the Holy Spirit gives you power. What? The Holy Spirit's going to give me power? and going to give you power? Awesome. Let's find out what kind of power the Holy Spirit gives us. And let's see how God made that promise, when he made that promise, and how he kept it. So let's study the promise that God makes, the promise we're talking about this week, which is the Holy Spirit gives you power. Awesome. Okay, it is Bible memory verse mania time. Are you ready to learn another memory verse? Learn another scripture from God's word? So that we can memorize it, not just up here, but on our hearts. I am memory verse mania. What's our memory verse for the week? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. What does it say? The Holy Spirit will come to you. Then you will receive power. One more time. Memory verse mania. What's our verse? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. What does it say? The Holy Spirit will come to you. Then you will receive power. That's awesome. Picture a tricycle in your mind. How many wheels does it have? Well, three, of course. A tricycle with three wheels works great, doesn't it? Then, think about that same tricycle again. This time, it only has two wheels. Do you still want to ride it? What? You don't think it would get very far? Well, why not? You have two perfectly wonderful wheels. Yes. But it isn't like a bicycle with two wheels and a line. Your two-wheel tricycle will be crooked and fall right over. A tricycle won't work the way it's supposed to work without that third wheel. You wouldn't settle for a tricycle with only two wheels. So don't settle for a faith with only two wheels. Love God the Father. Follow Jesus the Son. But don't forget about the Holy Spirit. Do you ever need help doing something? Something you know God wants you to do? Maybe it's standing up for someone who's being picked on. Or forgiving a friend who's hurt your feelings. Or talking to someone about Jesus. Jesus knew that sometimes you would need help to do the hard things. That's why he gave this promise. The Holy Spirit will come to you then you will receive power. The Holy Spirit will help you do what God wants you to do. The Holy Spirit's power was first promised to Jesus' disciples because Jesus knew they would need help to do the hard things. Our story today comes from Acts chapters 1 and 2. In the city of Jerusalem, the disciples huddled together in one place. The last few weeks have been like a terrible roller coaster ride of ups and downs. They had joyfully watched Jesus ride into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Great crowds of people had cheered and praised him. Then everything changed. Jesus was arrested, beaten, and spat upon. The one who told the storm to be still was nailed to a wooden cross like an ordinary thief. The one who brought Lazarus back to life was killed, and Jesus' body was placed in a borrowed tomb. Jesus had tried to warn his disciples that this would happen. It was part of God's plan to save them from sin, but they didn't understand. So when all those things did happen, just as Jesus had said, they were crushed. Then everything changed again. The tomb was found empty, and there was so much joy. Jesus was alive. He had risen from the grave. 
He walked and talked with them, laughed and ate with them, and taught them once again. For 40 days, Jesus stayed with his followers. Then, in a rush of clouds and glory, he rose up and returned to his home in heaven. Before he left, Jesus gave the disciples a promise. The Holy Spirit will come to you, then you will receive power. Jesus was leaving, but he wouldn't leave his disciples alone. He was sending another to help them. So his disciples watched and prayed and waited. Suddenly, a great rushing wind roared through the whole house. Flickering flames of fire danced over each disciple's head, and they were each filled with the Holy Spirit of God, the Helper, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit had come. The Spirit didn't come to live beside them as Jesus had done. Instead, he came to live inside them, to guide, to encourage, to pray for them, to give them help and strength, to remind them of all Jesus had taught them, to fill their minds and their mouths with just the right words to tell the world all about him. And that is exactly what his disciples did. At that time, people from all over the world were gathered in Jerusalem for the Pentecost celebration. They heard the great rushing noise and they crowded around the disciples. The disciples began speaking to the people in their own language. The Holy Spirit had given them power to speak in languages they had never spoken before. Then Peter stood up to speak before the whole crowd. This was the same Peter who had been too afraid to tell a servant girl that he even knew Jesus. Now he stood up before thousands and boldly told them all about Jesus, that he was the Son of God that he had been killed on a cross, that he had risen from the grave, and that he had done all this to save them from their sins. Change your hearts and lives, Peter begged the people. Be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 3,000 people believe what Peter said. 3,000 people became followers of Jesus, and 3,000 people were given the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit, because that promise was for them, and that promise is for you too. When Jesus left his disciples to return to heaven, he knew they would need help. So the helper was sent, the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit brought the power of God to live inside them to change them, to help them think like God thinks, love like God loves, and see like God sees. And the Spirit will do the same for you. The Holy Spirit will also fill your life with his gifts. You've probably heard them called the fruit of the Spirit. They are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. They grow in your life like apples on the branches of an apple tree. They'll keep growing in your life as long as you stay connected to the tree, to God. The Holy Spirit will pray for you, guide you, and give you courage and strength. He will bring the power of God to work in your life. When you follow Jesus, you always have someone to help you because Jesus promised. What was that promise? The Holy Spirit will come and you will have power. Okay, God made us a promise. What was that promise? The promise that we just talked about. Do you remember? Can you say it out loud? The, the, what? the Holy Spirit will come and give us what? Give us power. We will have power. So that's God's promise to us. Let's make a promise to God. And let's keep this promise that we make to him. What promise are we going to make today? 
Well, let's me, let me read it to you, and then I want you to say it with me. I will ask the Holy Spirit to give me courage to tell others about Jesus and the power to live like him. Okay, say it again. Ready? I will ask the Holy Spirit to give me courage to tell others about Jesus and the power to live like him. Let's keep that promise, okay? Now, let's say a prayer. Everybody bow your heads, close your eyes, get very, very quiet. Thank you, God, for sending your Holy Spirit to help me. Teach me to listen to him so I will always stay close to you. Amen. So this prayer I'd like for you to say every day this week. Say it before you go to bed, in the morning when you get up, just whenever you want to say it. But each day of this week, say this prayer. Say it with me again right now. Ready? Thank you, God, for sending your Holy Spirit to help me. Teach me to listen to him so I will always stay close to you. Amen. So let's remember to say our prayer every day this week. Okay? Thank you. I appreciate you doing that. I know you can. We'll talk soon about it. Let's see if next time I talk to you, you can tell me, Mr. Charlie, I said this prayer every day, just like you ask. All right. You know what time it is now? It is time for, for another memory verse. We've already said our memory verse mania verse. This is another verse that comes right from the scriptures. And guess what? It makes that same promise. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. John 16, verse 13. One more time. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. John 16, 13. All right, now you say it with me. Ready? When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. John 16, 13. Two memory verses to work on this week. A prayer to work on this week. A promise to keep this week. Lots of stuff you're learning today. Lots of stuff that you need to work on this week so that you can not only remember it in your heads, but you can have it on your hearts and you're actually going to do these things, not just talk about them, but actually do them. All right, now here's our reading assignment. This reading assignment is what we read with our mommies and daddies this week. You can do it one verse a day. You can do all the verses every day. But what I want you to do is sit down with mom and dad. Read these verses so that you can know what the Bible says about the promise that God makes us. So are you ready? The verses are John 14, 16, John 14, 17, John 14, 26, Romans 8, 26. Ephesians 1, 13, and John 15, 26. Those are the verses, six of them, one a day till next Sunday. Read, read one a day or all of them at once, but sit down with mom and dad and then read these verses because it's important to know what the God's word says, okay? All right, that's the end of our lesson for this week. What did we learn? We learned about the Holy Spirit. We talked about the fact that Jesus' disciples were all excited because Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem. He rode on the back of a donkey and the crowds cheered him and, and made a big deal about him. And they were so excited about that. And, and they were so happy that that was happening. And things changed. Jesus was arrested. Jesus was beaten. Jesus was spit upon. Then Jesus was hung on the cross and he died. Then he was placed in a tomb. So the disciples went from being very, very happy to being very, very scared and very, very sad. But then they changed again. Now, Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. Jesus came back to life. Jesus rose from the grave. Jesus talked to them and he ate with them and he taught them more about what he wanted them to do. And he spent 40 days with them, talking to them and, and teaching them and, and spending time with them. But then he ascended to heaven to be with his father. But he said, don't worry to his disciples. He said, you're not going to be alone. I'm not leaving you by yourself. I'm sending the comforter. I'm sending the Holy Spirit to, to help you, to guide you, to pray for you, to protect you. And he's not going to live beside you. He's going to live inside you. He's going to live in your heart. 
Now, they got special powers because the Holy Spirit was in their heart. Peter and the disciples were able to speak other languages when the Holy Spirit came like a fire on their heads and a great rushing wind. We have the Holy Spirit in our hearts too if we believe in Jesus and follow him. And he gives us special powers too. Not the ability to talk in different languages, but he gives us fruit of the Spirit. He gives us the, the love and the joy and the kindness and the patience and the goodness and the faithfulness and the gentleness and the self-control. Those are all powers he gives us. You're saying, Mr. Charlie, those aren't powers. Yes, they are. Those are powers. They're fruit of the Spirit. They're special gifts that he gives us so that we can love others just like God loves. And we can be gentle just like God is. And we can be kind just like Jesus was. And we can have self-control. And you know help, who helps us do that? Who's there to help us do that every day? The Holy Spirit, because he's living in our hearts. Okay? God made a promise. He made a promise to the disciples. And he makes a promise to me. And he makes a promise to you. The Holy Spirit will come and you will have power. God made that promise. And it comes true when you believe in him and follow him. Well, that's the end of our lesson this week. I hope you learned something about God's promise of the Holy Spirit. I hope you remember it. I hope you do your memory verses this week. I hope you remember to say your prayer every day. And I hope you remember to keep your promise that you made God this week. So, until we talk again, when we study another lesson about God's word, we love you. We miss you so, so much. And we will see you soon. Bye-bye.